This video is over Unit 3, Lesson 20, Mini Project Side Scroller. Start here with the overview in Canvas. So in this lesson, you're going to use conditionals to react to keyboard input or changes in variables and properties. You're also going to sequence commands to draw in the proper order, and then you will apply an iterator pattern to variables or properties in a loop. You need to read and complete all of the content materials and complete your side scroller assignment project. On the next page, it just talks about how you, in this lesson, that you have learned how to use conditional statements. Remember, these are if statements. And uh, so that a user can input, there can be user input in the game lab. So you're going to put everything that you've learned to complete the side scroller mini project. You can go back to any previous lesson if you need a coding refresher. If you feel like you need to go back and, and, and refresh your memory about which code to use. So at this point, here's our mini project for the side scroller. Here's the directions. For this project, you'll be completing an interactive side-scrolling game using all of the programming techniques that you have learned up to this point. In this game, you will have the frog that must jump to avoid the mushrooms while trying to get the flies. Each fly scores one point, and hitting the mushroom makes the player, the frog, the health go down. When the player's health hits zero, the game is over. So you're going to build this game in Code.org in Lesson 20 on Code.org. There are eight levels for you to complete. You have the intro, which kind of goes over the project, where, and then you go to Level 2, draw your background. Level 3, you're going to create your sprites. Level 4 is the player input, the player control, whether it's a mouse or a keyboard input, looping is level five and then level six is your sprite interactions and then level seven is creating that scoring and your scoreboards and then in level eight you're going to review the game when you get to level eight um, that is where you're going to paste your link and then put it in the document that you're going to download right here so go ahead and you would download that document make a copy of it and here is your assignment worksheet. So again, when you get to level eight, it just says right here, then that's where you're gonna submit that share link and then you know, copy the share link at level eight and then paste it right there. So let's go to code.org. Here we are in code.org. This is lesson 20, just showing you a different view here. Okay, so you're going to use what you've learned about collision detection and velocity and to create a simple side scroller game. There's lesson resources right here. If you want to click on there, it will take you to resources that'll help you with this activity. Go ahead and click number one, intro to side scrollers. This will take you to level one. So we're going to run this. You can see the example of this game. So as I run that, I can click my up and down so I can make my frog jump. And if the mushroom hits him, then he loses health, and when the frog touches the fly, it scores points, and the mushroom decreases the health. Okay, the frog doesn't move left or right, it only goes up and down. Okay, so take a few minutes, you know, reset that, run it, continue to play that, and get an idea of what's going on here before you start your project. Once you think like you've got an idea of what you need to create, that's the game you're gonna recreate. Then go to level two. So on level two, we have draw your background. So again, just remember, anytime you see this link right here, this icon, it means like that you are progressively creating your project. So you're gonna go through level two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight to create specific pieces of your project. 
So on this page, you're going to draw your background. So that game had a simple background of a blue sky, a white oval cloud, and a brown ground. So you can choose to make your own background, or you can make it as complicated as you want. So it says to do this, find the code comment slash slash, you know, background using the drawing tools to draw your background. So we're going to click on the drawing tools and then make sure that you run your program to make sure the background works. So right here you can see in the draw function, they've made all these comments for you to kind of help you where you're going to place everything in this project. So you're going to right here place on line 13, that's where you're going to start building your background. Once your background works and you've run it, then go to level 3. On level 3, this is where you're going to create your sprites. So you'll need a player, which is the frog, a target, which is the fly, and an obstacle, the mushroom. You can make them anything you want. If you don't want to have the frog or the fly or the mushroom, you could choose other characters or you can choose these. But you have to have a player, the target, and the obstacle where the target uh, gives you points and the obstacle takes away uh, the health of the player. So you can go to the follow these directions, go to the animation tab and make sure that you have the images that you want. They're already here for you if you want to use these. If you want to use other ones then you need to go find those. Um, find the code comment game setup. So here is the game setup. So this is where you're going to create your sprites is right here starting around line four. So you need to create your sprites. Okay, so just remember you've got to create your sprites. So you got to go to sprites and there's your code for that. Then you need to set an animation. There's the code for animation. You might want to set the scale to make sure that you might want to set the scale of your sprites if you want to make them smaller or bigger. That's up to you. You can place them on where you want them to be on the on the um, on your background. I suggest you have the frog just like you saw in the game, the frog on the bottom, and then the mushroom at the same level as the frog, so that they are at the same level, and then the fly is up in the sky. Um, so you need to set the starting X velocity of the target. So that means the fly that is the target that you need to start its velocity. In other words, it's counter pattern. So you're going to use velocity X because that fly, the target is going to go from left, from right to left. And then the obstacle, which is the mushroom needs to also have a velocity X because that is going to move also from the right side of the screen to the left. So if you need to go look at this again, go back to level one and you can replay that program, the example, so that you can see what you're building. And then make sure when you've got all this built that you test your program so that the player should be on the screen, which is the frog, the target, which is the fly, and the obstacle, which is the mushroom. Okay. And at this point, you're just uh, you're putting them on there and then you're setting up their velocity. So let's go back and look at level one really quick. So you can kind of see this again. You guys can run this as many times as you want. So you can see kind of where the background looks like. You don't have to make that exact background. You can choose whatever you want. And but you can see you need to kind of get that working. So where the mushroom is is moving from right to left. The fly is moving from right to left. So those are velocity x. And if you need to go back and review that, then you need to go to the previous lessons and review about velocity, about velocity. So go to the lesson on velocity if you if you're struggling how to do that. So once you've got that done and you've got your background set and now you've got your sprites set and they're moving the two sprites are moving. Then you go to level four and on level four this is the player controls. So this is where you, you, you set up the user input where 
the user pushes the up arrow and the player, which is the frog, can jump. Okay, so there's three parts to the jumping. Jump up when a key is pressed, go down when you're high enough, and don't fall through the ground. So you gotta make sure all of those are met. It says find the code, jumping, read the three comments in that section. So if we scroll down here into the draw function, you see it says jumping. If the player has reached the ground, stop moving. So then you're gonna put that code here on line 24. And then it says, if the player presses the up arrow, start moving up. So then the code, you're gonna create the code at line 27 to make that happen. And then here's another if statement. If the player reaches the top of the jump, start moving down. So you're gonna put that code there, just to kind of give you a hint. These are if statements, it says if, if, if. So obviously, you need to put your if statements in there and then build those, All right? And this is user input. So if you're not sure what to do, go back to the user input or the mouse input or the actually the keyboard input lesson. Go back to that lesson and review how to make those if statements. So you can read through this. This is add a conditional. That's the if statement that checks whether the player has pressed the up key. Add a conditional that uses the sprite's Y property to check whether it's high enough. And then add a conditional to check whether the sprite is low enough on the screen to be on the ground. So that's what you're gonna do on level four. So that if we go back to level one, where we can see the actual program, all, all you're doing in level four is creating those three if statements with the user control with the keyboard input. So if I run this, see how I press the up button? When I press the up arrow, my frog jumps, but it doesn't go through the, and then it goes only high enough. So I, it stops at a certain um, position on Y. And when it gets there, then it goes back down, but it doesn't fall through that ground. So it stays within that area. So that's what you're creating in level four. When you've got that working, you've got your background, you've got your three, your three, your player, your target, and your, um, actually the frog and the mushroom and the fly all moving, then go to level five. And this is where you're going to create a loop, right? So the obstacle, the mushroom, and the target need to loop. So if you don't loop those, then they're only going to go once across the screen from right to left. So now you got to create a loop. So you got to go to the looping comment. So it says do this, find the comment that says looping. So you would scroll in here, scroll down, and here's the looping. So read the information here. And they are helping you here. So again, these are if. Add a conditional. So anytime you see add a conditional, that means you're going to add an if statement. Okay, it says add a conditional that uses the obstacle sprites X property to check whether it has moved off the screen. If it has moved off the screen, use its X property to put it back on the right hand side of the screen. And then, so that's one if statement would go there. And another if statement would go down here because it says add a conditional that checks whether the target has moved off the screen. If it has moved off the screen, you, um, you need to put it back on the right side of the screen. So basically, one is for, one of those if statements is for the obstacle, which is the mushroom, and then the other if statement is for the target, which is the fly. So just a little bit of a hint, the code will be exactly, almost exactly the same for these two if statements. The only difference is one is for the obstacle, which is the mushroom, and the other is going to refer to the target or the fly. Once you've got that working, then you go to level six. And in level six, this is where you have your sprites interacting. So when the obstacle, the mushroom, when it, um, when it touches the frog, the health of the frog decreases. And then the score, that's one interaction, okay? So when mushroom touches frog, the health decreases. 
The other interaction is the score increases when the fly is touched by the frog. So two different interactions there between sprites. Mushroom touches frog, that affects the health, and when the frog touches the fly, that increases the score. So you need to go down to the sprite interactions comment. So if we scroll down here, and again, I'm just giving you a start here, but you guys have to figure out the code. Here it is, sprite interactions, right here. So sprite interactions starts on line 14. It says, if the player touches. So again, we already know that's a conditional and that's an if statement. So it says, create a conditional and read through here that checks whether the player sprites touching the obstacle. So again, you're gonna put if statements in there you might have to add the else. That's up to you when you create this. If you got to add the else, remember you just click that plus sign and it'll give you the else. If you click the minus, it gets rid of it. So you need to create those, those conditionals. Once you've got that interaction happening, happening, as we can see back here, if we go back to the example on level one, when I run that, you can see as I touch the fly, If I touch the mushroom, I lose health. So I'm losing health there. Touching the mushroom. And when my health goes down, when that frog's health goes down, then the game is over. So that's back to level six. So all you're doing is you're, you're setting up those using those if statements right here, sprite interactions, remember? So you're gonna put those if statements in there. And then you're gonna be using this sprite is touching. That's what you're gonna be doing here. Then once that's working, always make sure you run your code to make sure it's working. Then the level seven is the scoreboard, okay? Because when you run this, which we're not going to run it because it's not set up, I'm just giving you, um, just explaining what you're going to do. But when all your stuff's created, right here, the scoreboard needs to be finished. So you would go to the scoreboard underneath here, got to find the comment that says scoreboard, and right here, scoreboard. So you need to add the scoreboard and a health meter. Well, the health meter is already here. You need to add the scoreboard. So once you get that set up, you probably need to go back to previous lessons to go review how do you make that scoreboard. Uh, but you would add it in here around line 58. You would just put that scoreboard right in there and run your code to make sure that the score and the health is displayed. When you've got your game, your game should be fully working the same way that it works on level one. And once you're done, you can go to level eight. And this is where you're going to review your game to make sure that it's all working. And then this is where if your game's working and it's similar to level one, where, that, where the example game was, then click the share button and that's where you would get your link of your final project, and then you would paste that into your document. And just a reminder, there's helps and tips right here, and you can go back to any lesson by clicking on the, the orange arrow, and you can go back to any lesson and review. So if you need to go back and review conditionals, this is the if statements. If you need to go back and review the keyboard input, because keyboard input is used, in this project. And then you might need to go back and review velocity and then the collision detection. So those are the, le those are the other lessons, 14 and 15 and 18 and 19, that's being used in this uh, mini project, the side scroller. So just remember, you can go back and review to see which code you need to use. And that's it for lesson 20 the mini project on the side scroller.